to spread us friends. Eternal God, as you gladden the wedding in Cana by the presence of your Son, so by his presence now bring your joy to this wedding. Look in favor upon Christopher and Rebecca, and grant that they, rejoicing in all your gifts, may at length celebrate with Christ the marriage feast which has no end. Amen. Marriage is a holy estate instituted by God. We should therefore listen to the word of God regarding his gift of marriage. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helper for him. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, In the beginning, the Creator made people male and female. And God said, For this reason, the man will leave his father and mother and unite with his wife, and the two will become one. So they are no longer two but one. Man must not separate them what God has joined together. And Jesus also said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. And reading from the words of St. Paul in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church, and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant, as a radiant church, without sin or wrinkle, or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed and care for the body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, the man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. I am talking about Christ and the church. However, however each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. Here ends the reading. Chris and Becca, relatives and friends, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I figured it out the other day, and I realized that I have done almost 200 weddings in the last 36 years. And that means 200 wedding sermons. And to be honest with you, I'm getting a little tired of it. Doing the wedding itself is okay, and the reception afterwards is always a good time, but it's the wedding service I do not like. I really don't know what to say anymore about marriage after 200 wedding sermons. I'd much rather write five funeral sermons than one wedding sermon. At a funeral, I know what to say. I talk about how wonderful it is that our departed loved one is done with all the sorrows and troubles of this world now gone on to eternal life in heaven. I could say work hard, use your head, save your money, easy on the beer, be content, don't worry, be happy. Don't always be wanting something else and going broke getting it. Be polite and kind to each other. Don't be so doggone stubborn. Talk things over. And like the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. I could go on and on like that for a long time with all kinds of advice, but no one wants to hear it, so why should I trouble you with that today? Like I said, I don't like giving wedding sermons. But even so, I'm glad we're here for a wedding today and not a funeral. And I'm glad it's for the two of you. I've enjoyed getting to, both, getting to know the both of you over the last several months as we've been getting ready for this day. And I'm very happy that the two of you have made it through all your ups and downs thus far. And I'm honored and grateful and feel privileged to be a part of your day today. Even if it means doing another sermon. And so now, as I said before, you are in for it. Everyone here knows that. You probably do too. But that isn't all I want to say. I don't want to leave it at that. Yes, there will be trouble ahead. For anyone who's alive, there's trouble ahead. That's life. Married or not, we're all in for it, either way. But you do at least have each other to share it all with, and that's a blessing not to be taken for granted. There's truth in the old saying, a burden shared is half the burden, and a joy shared is twice the joy. And as you share each other's Life, as you share life's joys and burdens, 
work on appreciating each other, or as the old Bows say, cherishing and honoring and loving each other. Hang in there, and you'll find that just as the Bible says, the two shall become one. That's not just a command. It's that too. But it's also a promise. <laughs> Hang in there. Keep those promises that you make today. And despite all the burdens and irritations of life together, you will find that God does bind the two of you together. In a way, and, and the two of you will become one. With shared lives and memories. And William and perhaps more children. And everything else that binds two people together until... As the balls say, until death parts you. Yeah, it's a burden, but it's wonderful too. So don't forget to focus on all what is good in each other and cherish those good times that you do have together amidst all that might go wrong. You need those times and places where the two of you can just relax and be yourself and be comfortable together. And it's nice to have someone to do that with. So make time to enjoy each other's company. Even for something as simple as a Saturday morning cup of coffee out in the backyard, talking it all over. So now if I may end, just by giving you a little bit of advice, I would say this. Be thankful to God for everything. Be content. And then don't forget, say your prayers together, go to church together, remember God in your life together, and you'll be alright. Chris and Becca, we wish you all the best. May God be with you and with him in your life together. Amen. Joy that begins now and is brought to perfection in the life to come. But because of sin, our age-old rebellion, the gladness of marriage can be overcast, and the gift of family can become a burden. But because God, who established marriage, continues still to bless it with his abundant and ever-present support, we can be sustained in our weariness and have our joys restored. Christopher and Rebecca your intention to share with each other your joys and sorrows and all that the years will bring. With your promises, bind yourselves to each other as husband and wife. Christopher, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her, so long as you both shall live? Rebecca, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep the only unto him, so long as you both shall live? Join your right hand for the exchange of olives. I, Christopher, take thee, Becca, Rebecca. <coughs> to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish, till death do us part. I, Rebecca, take thee, Christopher. I, Rebecca, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Love and to cherish, till death do us part. I give you this ring as a sign of my love and faithfulness. I give you this ring as a sign of my love and faith. For as much as Christopher and Rebecca 
have consented together in holy wedlock, and have declared the same before God and in the presence of this company, I pronounce them husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Lord God, who created our first parents and established them in marriage, establish and sustain you, that you may find delight in each other and grow in holy love until your life's end. May you dwell in God's presence forever. May true and constant love preserve you. Amen. Today, Christopher and Rebecca have chosen to braid three strands together into a single cord. Each strand has a significant meaning. The first strand represents the Lord Jesus, that he has been invited by Chris and Becca into the position of authority in this marriage relationship. The second strand represents the groom and his wife. The third strand represents the bride and her life. In braiding these three strands together, Christopher and Rebecca will demonstrate that their marriage is more than a joining of two lives together. It's a unity with God as well. They have chosen to allow God to be at the center of their marriage, woven into every aspect of it. Ecclesiastes 4.12 reads, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Today, Christopher and Rebecca have been woven together by God as one in marriage. Better hold on to your hats, Chris and Becca, and be ready for all of that until death parts you. Let's pray for Christopher and Rebecca and their life together. Faithful Lord, source of love, pour down your grace upon Christopher and Rebecca that they may fulfill the vows they have made this day. By your grace, enrich their marriage so that they may love, honor, respect, and cherish one another so that their home may be a home of love, joy, and peace. As you love them, may they love each other, doing those things which are pleasing to you and helpful to each other. Teach them to live not only for themselves, but also for you and for those around them. Give them a strong faith in Jesus Christ and a continual loyalty to you and your church. Sustain and defend them amidst all trials and temptations. And help them so to pass through this world in faith toward you that, when this brief life has ended, they may enjoy eternal life with you in your kingdom. We pray the same for all families everywhere, so that all may live in the joy and peace you have intended for them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now we join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of God, forever and ever. Amen. Now, Christopher and Rebecca, as you go on your way, may God go with you. May He go before you to show you the way. May God go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you. Above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, you may kiss your bride.